your brain can eat itself. In extreme conditions, your brain can literally begin consuming itself. That phrase alone makes you pause. What the hell did you just hear? Yet it's rooted in real neuroscience and the implications are chilling. Picture the brain not only pruning unused connections, as it does naturally, but launching a kind of internal self-destruction. When glial cells, microglia, and astrocytes become overactivated, they begin to engulf synapses, neurons, and connections. Researchers in Italy in 2017 found that sleep-deprived mice showed signs of astrocytic phagocytosis. The cleanup crew went wild, eating away even healthy neural links. What does this mean for us humans? It suggests that under extreme stress, chronic lack of sleep, or neurodegenerative conditions, the brain's balance shifts. Instead of just doing maintenance, it starts self-cannibalism. That shifts our picture of the brain. Instead of a monument to control, it becomes a fragile ecosystem, capable of turning inward destructively. And yes, that's a dark tone, but it's real. So the next time someone says, your brain is going to eat you, you might take them seriously, even if only a little. You're a little radioactive. Your body emits thousands of nuclear decays every single second, and it's 100% normal. Inside each of us, elements like potassium-40, a naturally occurring radioactive isotope, are present in tiny amounts. Every second, there are atomic decays happening in your tissues. You're quietly glowing with particle emissions. This fact makes you reconsider what alive means. You're alive because of chemical and atomic flux, not just biology. You're inside a reactor of sorts, extremely benign, but radioactive nonetheless. What's weird is how nobody feels it. We never sense the tens of thousands of decays per second inside us, but they're happening. Our bodies deal with this subtly, constantly repairing, fighting off tiny damage. It's unsettling and yet empowering. You are radioactive, but you're also resilient. You've evolved to handle this internal cauldron of atomic activity. You're literally glowing, just too dim to see. Here's where the tone goes sci-fi. Your body emits light, but your eyes just aren't good enough to see it. Yes, really. Scientists have shown that living organisms emit ultra-weak photons, a phenomenon called biophoton emission, or ultra-weak photon emission, UPE. A 2025 study even measured live mice and plants in ultra-dark boxes, detecting faint visible light that ceased after death. What is this light? It's a byproduct of metabolic reactions, oxidative processes inside cells, and reactive oxygen species events that occasionally eject a photon. It's tiny, far below what our eyes detect, but it's real. Imagine walking around and glowing faintly, but no one sees you. That's you right now. It makes your body feel more like a living star than a lump of flesh. So don't just think of yourself as flesh and bone. Think of yourself as a faint cosmic beacon. You can survive with half a brain. Here's one that sounds impossible, but it isn't. People have lived full, meaningful lives with half or more of their brain removed or missing. In cases like severe epilepsy, children have undergone hemispherectomy, removal of one entire cerebral hemisphere, and still grown into functioning adults, walking, talking, and learning. The brain rewires itself. What this tells us, the brain is malleable, far more plastic than we assume. When one area is gone, other parts step up. It challenges the idea that our gray matter bulk equals full capacity. Instead, it suggests our brains are resilient, adaptable networks. If that half-brain person were your neighbor, you'd never guess the magnitude of what they survived. It's humbling. Your heart has its own mini-brain. Moving from the head to the chest, your heart has tens of thousands of neurons and some decision-making ability. Research from Karolinska Institute and Columbia University in 2024 confirmed that the heart houses its own complex nervous system, often called the Intrinsic Cardiac Nervous System, ICNS, or the little brain of the heart. These neurons can regulate heartbeat rhythm locally, process signals independent of the cranial brain, respond to chemical and mechanical changes, and send feedback to the brain. It's not conscious thought in the heart, but it's decision-making at a local level. Think of your heart as a mini-computer inside you, one that negotiates each beat, adapts to your body's demands, and coordinates with the bigger brain. This flips the script. The heart isn't just a pump, it's a smart organ in its own right, quietly making choices. You have more than one brain. Okay, gross yet fascinating. You have more neurons in your gut than a cat has in its entire brain. The network is the enteric nervous system, 
ENS, lining your digestive tract. Estimates say it contains roughly 500 million neurons, far more than the spinal cord and a sizable chunk of neural real estate. It controls digestion, senses chemicals, monitors mechanical conditions, and communicates richly with the brain via the vagus nerve. You know that gut feeling you get when something is off? That might be your second brain talking. It's not your skull brain doing the talking alone. Gross factor aside, thinking about guts and neurons, it's amazing. You're carrying a neural network in your intestines that works semi-autonomously. So next time you say, my guts told me, you might be literally correct. Your brain feels no pain, even during surgery. Here's a twist. Your brain processes pain, but can't feel it itself. When surgeons operate on a brain, awake neurosurgery is a thing. The patient often feels no pain from the brain tissue being touched because the brain lacks pain receptors for itself. What does that tell us? That the thinking organ itself is insensitive to direct injury in the way you'd expect. The pain you feel is from the surrounding tissues, scalp, skull, meninges, not the brain matter itself. This challenges our assumptions about brain pain. It also explains why brain surgery can be done while the patient is awake to monitor cognition, because the brain won't cry out. It's bizarre to consider the thing that thinks, feels, and reflects cannot itself feel pain in the way your skin does. You're always seeing the past. Here's a cerebral one to slow you down. You never see reality in real time, just a lagged version your brain processes. Our sensory systems take time, milliseconds or more, to transmit signals for the brain to process them and then create the perception you experience. So the image you see is a slightly delayed version of the real event. This means that every moment you live is already history. Your brain is always catching up, reconstructing what happened, but a little late. It's a fascinating recalibration of experience. The now you feel is already just behind. That has implications for how you respond, decide, and feel. And when we pile that on with brain gut networks, heart brains, glowing bodies, you start to see how weird our biology really is. It invites a question. If perception is delayed and reconstructed, how much of reality do we actually experience? Your liver can regrow like a starfish. If you ever doubted that humans have a bit of superhero DNA, meet your liver, the only internal organ that can regrow itself. You could lose up to 70% of it in surgery or injury, and in a matter of weeks, it can regenerate back to nearly its original size. That's not fiction. It's regenerative biology at work. Scientists at the University of Pittsburgh and MIT have spent years studying hepatocyte proliferation, discovering that liver cells can re-enter the cell cycle and divide even in adulthood, something most organs can't do. The liver's ability to regenerate is why partial liver transplants are possible. One person donates a portion, and both livers regrow to normal size. It's as if your body took a page from a starfish's playbook. Every time you detox, your liver's quietly rebuilding, adapting, and thriving, a natural reboot button living inside you. Your bones are stronger than concrete. You might not think of your skeleton as a powerhouse, but ounce for ounce, bone is stronger than concrete. A cubic inch of bone can withstand roughly 19,000 pounds of pressure. That's the weight of five pickup trucks stacked on a single square inch of you. What makes it so powerful isn't just hardness, it's architecture. Bones are made of a composite of collagen for flexibility and hydroxyapatite crystals for strength. It's nature's perfect engineering blend of toughness and lightness. At the microscopic level, bones are full of trabecular scaffolding, a honeycomb-like network that distributes stress like shock absorbers. So even though your skeleton feels fragile when you stub your toe, it's actually one of the most efficient structures ever, a miracle of strength, flexibility, and self-repair. Your circulatory system could wrap around the earth. Here's one that stretches the imagination, quite literally. If you took all your blood vessels, every artery, vein, and capillary, and lined them up end to end, the total length would be around 96,000 kilometers, about 60,000 miles. That's according to the latest 2024 anatomical estimates from Harvard Medical School and the Cleveland Clinic, slightly lower than the old 100,000 kilometer figure, but still mind bending. That means your body's internal plumbing could circle the earth more than twice. Inside that vast network, your heart pumps nearly 7,500 liters of blood every single day, keeping every cell alive and fed. It's hard to grasp that such cosmic scale exists inside something the size of your torso, but it does. You're not just a person, 
You're a walking planet of rivers. You're constantly rebuilding your stomach. Let's end where the journey began, inside. Your stomach is so acidic that it could dissolve metal if left unchecked. The hydrochloric acid inside has a pH around 1.5, strong enough to break down meat, bone, and nearly everything you eat. But that acid doesn't destroy you because your body regrows its stomach lining every few days. The mucosal layer constantly regenerates itself, creating a new barrier to prevent your stomach from digesting itself. It's one of the most quietly heroic processes in your body, a system that saves your life every week without you ever noticing. Your body, in short, isn't just surviving. It's rebuilding, glowing, regenerating, and radiating light, energy, and life every second. When you put it all together, brains that eat themselves, hearts that think, guts that feel, bones stronger than concrete, organs that regrow, one truth stands out. You are not fragile. You are a living machine of light, electricity, and resilience. Constantly rebuilding, adapting, and glowing, even when you don't realize it. Your body is both terrifying and miraculous. And it's all happening right now, in silence. If this blew your mind, share this video with someone who needs to know how incredible their body really is. And subscribe for more deep dive explainers into the strange hidden side of being human.